Hey everyone, it's Tyler from Universal Rackets and in this video we are going to be going over a tons of different tips and tricks for you to improve your dink. Once again, if you stay tuned for this whole video, you are going to be able to double your effectiveness at dinking on the pickleball court. Now dinking is the number one thing that you need to learn when you're playing pickleball. It's what separates players from smashing the ball at you to players popping the ball up at you. The dinking is very underrated. People think it's just so easy, so easy. All I gotta do is just stand here and hit it into the kitchen. But what the dink really does is it forces your opponent to be neutralized. And what I mean by that is think, if your opponent has a high ball, they can smash down on it. But if your opponent has a low ball, they have to hit it up over the net. So by utilizing the dink, number one, you're not going to be able to get the ball smashed at you. And number two, you're going to be able to create opportunities that you could smash it at your opponent. So in this video, again, we're going to be going over tons of different tips, tons of different tricks for you to improve your dink. Now, before we get started with these tips, the number one thing that I wanna bring up is that different tips work for different people. In pickleball, not one size fits all. So I'm going to be giving you throughout this video just tons and tons of different tips. Try all of them and see what works for you. So the first tip that I want you to think while you're dinking, while you're up at the kitchen, is that less is more. Once again, when you're up at the kitchen, I want you to think that less is more. A lot of players, the reason why they struggle with things they can't do well is because they swing super hard. They try to hit the ball super hard. They think that they need to do so much. And really, again, the more less, the more finesse you have, the better you're going to be. So my first tip for you to instantly improve your dink is just make sure you think less is more throughout your whole shot. Again, when I swing, if I swing really hard, right? if I'm doing tons of movement, I'm more prone to popping the ball up. Rather, if I just hold the paddle loose and I just do a little bit of movement, then I can keep the ball low. So not only less is more with my body, less is more with my movement, but less is more with my actual swing. And this gets to the next tip. I want you to think of a dink like a push, not like a swing. Once again, when you're on the pickleball court and you're at the kitchen, I want you to think of the dink as a push, not as a swing. The reason why a lot of players pop the ball up in the air is because they do a swing into the dink. Not only the swing makes more time, makes you pop up the ball in the air, but if you get used to taking a big backswing for the dink, when the ball comes real fast back at you, if someone speeds the ball up to you, you're not going to have time to get to the next shot. So I want you to think, instead of a swing, it's a push. All that a dink is, is from going here to here. Once again, point A to point B. It is not a giant swing. So all I'm going to do is push the ball forward. Again, here, here. So thinking that it is a push, minimizing your swing, it's going to make you so much more effective on court. Now, what I want you to do, not everybody, and clearly when we're picking up pickleball, is going to be perfect like this but less is more and a little bit goes a long way. So if your swing's this big, I want you to keep your swing a little bit smaller, shorten your swing. The next thing going off of that as well is you always wanna make sure that contact is out in front of your body. I want you to think that you have a wall coming out of the sides of your hips. My paddle never goes back beyond that wall. Every single time that I dink and pick a ball, I'm always just keeping my paddle out in front. I don't want my contact point to be back here. I always want it to be out here. So a great drill to, that you can do is go out with your partner and just hit every single time and try to hit the ball earlier than you normally do. Think if the ball's coming to me and I wait for it, I'm going to get much more closer than if I'm early to it. I don't have patience, I'm going out to it. So I want you to think that you're not letting the ball come to you, you are going to the ball. You are being proactive, not reactive. So again, regardless of what level you are, if you can think of these tips that you are what? Less is more, that you're taking less of a swing. We're shortening our swing. We are keeping the paddle on front. You're going to instantly improve your dinks. Now we're going to be getting into some more advanced and technical tips. The next thing that I want you to do with your dink that'll always improve it is I want you to think that the tip of your paddle is weighted. Once again, if the tip of my paddle is weighted, when I release the paddle, what's going to happen? It's going to go downwards, okay? Again, if the tip of my paddle is weighted, what's going to happen when I release it? Gravity is going to pull it downward. A great tip to always ensure that you make your dinks. If you ever feel like you're struggling with getting the ball in or keeping it out of the net, 
what do you have to do? You point the tip of your paddle down because pointing the tip of the paddle down is going to open up the face. If you can think that paddle tip down every single time, that you're pointing your paddle tip down every single time, that's going to open up your paddle face so you're going to be able to get under and lift the ball. A lot of times why players struggle with hitting the ball in the net too many times is because when they dink, they don't have their paddle tip down. They have their paddle tip pointing to the side, which, okay, if you drop and you want to hit a topspin dink or a slice dink, that's okay. But for more beginner, intermediate club level, if you can think that the paddle tip's down, it's going to automatically open the face up. So think again, you're opening your face. Another thing that you could do is you can think that you're a baseball player and you're fielding the ground ball. Again, when I field the ground ball, it's not close to my body, it's out in front away from my body. When I dink, again, I'm opening up the face Another thing that you can think about as well is that the tip of the paddle or the butt cap of the paddle, sorry, is pointing up towards, let's say, my navel or my stomach, okay? So every single time that I want, again, I'm going to point the paddle tip down, point the butt cap towards my stomach, and that's going to ensure that I always get under the ball every single time. Now, the next thing that I want you to do, and this makes it so much easier, and when we teach players at Universal Rackets, we go over this, is always try to hit a forehand. Once again, when you're up at the kitchen at the net, when you're hitting in the air, you always want to take as a volley, right? You want to take every single volley. Sorry, you always want to take the volley as a backhand. Now, when you're dinking, though, you always want to take as a forehand. So when I volley, again, if the ball's over here, backhand volley in the middle backhand volley over here backhand volley the only time that i don't hit a backhand volley is when the ball's all the way over here inversely for the dink watch if the ball's here forehand if the ball's here forehand if the ball's here forehand over here forehand the only time that i don't take a forehand is when the ball is all the way over here a lot of players where they go wrong and where they struggle is the ball's coming in the middle and they take it as a backhand. Again, they take it as a backhand and their knuckles are facing forward. I always want my palm facing forward, palm facing forward, and that ensures that I can get under the ball or like fielding the ground ball. So what I want you to start doing again is be familiar that if the ball's out wide, look, you're going to hit as a forehand. If ball's in the middle, you're going to hit as a forehand. If the ball's over here, you might move over a little bit and try to hit a forehand. Most people, probably 9.5 out of 10 people, will always prefer their dominant side shot rather than their non-dominant side as a backhand. The forehand is typically much more easier, much more user-friendly than the backhand. So think always hit as a forehand. Now, the next thing that you can do for your dink that's going to completely transform it and make it much better if you don't already do this is get your non-dominant hand involved. Too many players are up at the kitchen line, too many players are just standing here and they're going like this. Again, they're going like this, okay? If you can utilize your non-dominant hand and put it together with your dink, it's not only going to help you be more balanced, but it's also going to help you make sure that your paddle is in the proper position. Every single time, what I want you to do again is I want you to get your non-dominant hand involved instead of keeping it down. So I want to make sure for my ready position, it all starts at the ready position, that I am here. My paddle's out in front and away from my body. I'm not here, okay? I'm not here. I'm here. So I'm always going to keep this non-dominant hand above the water. And what I mean by that is pretend that there's water up to, let's say, below my chest. I'm always going to keep that non-dominant hand above water. By keeping that non-dominant hand above water every single time, that's going to ensure that I'm able to, again, be balanced and really get under the ball. Also, what's going to happen is by keeping this non-dominant hand up, it's going to ensure that I end up in the proper position. There's too many players, and maybe yourself, you feel like you can't get to the next ball. It goes too fast at the kitchen, and the reason probably why is because after you swing your paddles down or you come across your body if you're a tennis player, if you can get your non-dominant hand involved and think that after you're done your swing, you always touch your paddle, look, that's going to ensure that I'm in the proper position ready position. Once again, if you ever struggle with getting in the proper ready position, I want you to think that your hand is touching your paddle once you're done every single time. The next thing that you can do is make sure that you're always actively moving up at the kitchen. Myself, included and I had to learn this the hard way when I drill when I drill with my amazing wife the pickle yogi we go and we drill we go cross court drill more than play I want to get better everything like that right but I'm cross court dinking and I'm here and I'm here and I'm here right cool I'm getting a rally I can do hundreds I feel good 
improving, but what happens? When I'm standing there during drilling, then when I go to play, players aren't trying to hit to me, that I leave the middle open. So what I mean by is I'll dink twice, and then the player go in the middle, and I can't even get to the ball because I'm used to standing here. I always want to make sure after I dink, I always end up back on my side, or I always follow the ball. Again, when I'm dinking, if I go over here, I don't wanna just stand over here because I open up the middle. I wanna make sure here, and then I follow it, or here and stay here. I want to be active throughout my dinking. Now, well, Tyler, you said less is more. Yes, less is more. You don't need to be running, you don't need to be sprinting, but you always wanna be shifting side to side. I like to think, pretend this is your midpoint, and you always want to push off on your outside leg and get back to the ball. So if I go over here and I dink, right, I'm going to push off back here. If I go over here and dink, here we are, look, I'm going to push off back here. I can do that or I can follow the ball. The next thing that you can do that will instantly improve your dink is by thinking about rhythm. By ensuring rhythm and implementing rhythm into your game, it's going to make you so much more better and so much more patient next time you hit the court. The last thing you want to do is hit two, three dinks, and then automatically try to speed the ball up and have your opponent smash it at you. So by thinking about rhythm, it's going to completely transform your game. I want you to think of dinking like a pendulum motion. One and two, and one and two, and one and two. It's not one, two, one, two, one, two, or one, two, three, right? So I want to think, I'm going to go out to the ball, one. I'm going to go back to the ball, two. I'm going to go out to the ball, one. I'm going to go back and recover, two. If you can get into a rhythm and start thinking of it like a pendulum motion, it's going to help you be so much more patient while you hit. Again, it's going to make you so much more patient. I need you to think while you're dinking, you could go forever. You can go as long as possible. And that's another thing while you're dinking. If you keep on telling yourself, don't pop it up, don't pop it up, don't pop it up, what are you going to do? You're going to pop it up. So I need you to have the mentality, and this is more of a strategy mental tip, is thinking that you can hang here every single time. Once again, when you're in a dinking rally with someone, you, you know automatically that you can outlast your opponent. Now that is the mentality that you need to have. Now the next thing that you can do that's going to make such a big difference is when you get pulled out wide, instead of trying to go out wide, what can you do? Number one, you can hit an ATP, of course, but number two, I want you to go into the middle. If you ever get burned, let's say, right? If you ever get hurt, what I want you to do is instead of just trying to get it diagonal, right? And what I mean by it is they pull me out wide, right? They maybe move me, they get me deep, they pull me out wide. I'm going to try to go cross court, most players will, and then I'm not popping the ball up because it's super difficult. What I want you to do is instead of going super cross court or trying to speed up the ball down the middle, if you ever get hurt on your dinks and get pulled out wide, I want you to make sure that you aim for the middle. Once again, if you ever feel like you get burned, you get hurt on your dinks, I want you to make sure that you aim for the middle. That's going to allow you to get back into the point. So if you ever get burned, you ever feel like you're on defense, where are you going now? You are going in the middle. Now, the next thing that you can do to instantly improve your dinks is start thinking about the different locations that you hit. A lot of players think that the only place that you can aim is diagonal cross court because they drill this way again. They drill this over and over again. This is how they warm up every single time. So they go cross court every single time. They go cross court. They go cross court. What got me to, let's say, a 4-5 plus player, 100% 4-5 plus, I'd consider myself over a 5-0 now, is by learning about the middle. Too many players do not aim for the middle. They think the only place to aim is diagonal and cross court. If you can aim for the middle, down the middle solves a riddle, magic middle. It creates opportunities and it creates confusion and it switches up the rally pattern. So what I want you to think is not only utilize it as a cop out, but also go to the middle as well. Maybe the two people that you're playing during open play, they don't know who's going to get to the middle of the ball. Maybe this person's going to be a little bit hesitant and then they're going to catch it a little bit late and pop the ball up in the air. The next thing that I want you to do, the next thing that I want you to do is think about a third option. Players think the only places to aim are out wide and in the middle. Another place that you can aim is straight up down the line. Once again, if you can aim straight up down the line, 
to your opponent instead of going diagonal, it could catch them off guard, especially if they didn't watch this video. Maybe they're taking their middle dink as a backhand. They're not thinking always as a forehand. Maybe they're not ready, okay? The shorter distance, if you ever go down the line at someone, nine times out of 10, or let's say eight times out of 10, they're probably going to go directly at you. So here's what's going to happen. If you ever wanna to try to get a put away, dink, 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 cross court, cross court, and then go straight ahead to this person, hit a little bit shorter of a dink, and then what? They're going to probably either A, go across court and get you out of it, or B, they're going to go straight at you and then you're going to put the ball away. So if you ever wanna kind of bait your opponent to pop the ball up in the air to you, go straight at them. It might force them to pop the ball up and then you could put it down. Or if you go straight at them, you can go around and hit the Ernie as well if you're more advanced. So think, instead of just going diagonal, now we're incorporating the middle, but we're also incorporating straight ahead towards my opponent, trying to jam them, trying to get them to pop the ball up. Now, the next thing that I want you to do is don't be afraid to take balls out of the air. And what I mean by that is don't be able to hit dink volleys. Now, what's the difference between a volley and a dink volley? Well, a volley is what? A lot of players, they think the ball's in the air, I have to go hard automatically. If the ball's in the air, I can still go soft. Once again, if someone hits the ball in the air to me, I can still go soft and keep that going if it's not the best shot. I want you to think green zones up here, yellow zones around here, red zones down here. If I get a ball in the yellow zone, I can still hit a dink or a volley. The last thing that I want to do though is let that ball get too close. We're keeping the paddle out front. We're being short, right? We're keeping it precise. We're taking the balls early. The last thing that I want to do is I don't want to get jammed, be hesitant to take the ball out of air and then I'm going to pop the ball up. So what I want you to do is lean in with your paddle and take it out of the air. And that's my next thing, okay? If you wanna take your dinks to the next level, your ready position shouldn't be close to your body. It should be out in front of your body. Now again, if you struggle with the proper ready position, I told you to put two hands on the paddle. If you're getting more advanced, I want you to start finishing with your paddle out in front. I want you to think that there is a shield throughout your shot, right? So there's a shield. I can't let the ball get close to me. So every single time, my paddle's already going to be out there. So I'm what? I'm either going to, look, I never take my paddle back. Now I'm e even able to take balls out of the air. So keep your paddle out in front from the start. Start in a better position and you're gonna be so much better on court. Now the next thing I want you to do is, number one, don't use your wrist, okay? You don't want to use your wrist. You want to go with your arm and your shoulder. Now this is what every single person says to think, but it's huge. A lot of players, they struggle because they try to use too much wrist. They try to hit too much spin. They think, what, if I move my wrist really fast, no, it's not gonna work. Okay, if I wanna hit a top spin ding, I'm going to get back of the ball, but I'm never going to flex my wrist like this or turn my wrist like I'm turning a key. So I want you to think again, less is more, and that you do not have to utilize your wrist. Make sure you think that you're holding the paddle loose. If you hold the paddle tight, it's not gonna be right. If you hold the paddle tight, you're not gonna absorb the impact of the ball. It's going to bounce off more and you're probably going to pop up the ball in the air. Guys, if you hold the paddle looser, one thing for me is I realize when I automatically loosen up, I let go in my dinks, it makes me minimize the amount of errors that I pop the ball up. So on a scale one to 10, 10 being a death grip, I want you to be about a two or a three or even a one. If someone came to take the paddle out of your hand, it should automatically come out instantly, okay? Then if you wanna take it even further and you wanna improve your dinks, I want you to start realizing about the three main types of spins. Number one is the top spin. The top spin means what? You're going to brush up on the back of the ball. That's more of an aggressive shot. Number two is a slice dink. You're going to get under the ball. So again, top spin, you're going to go on top of the ball. Slice, you're going to go under the ball. And then the regular dink, you're just going to keep your paddle tip down and go forward. Now, the next thing that I want you to think about is not only the spins, but the placements. Not down the middle, straight ahead, or out wide, but I want you to think about either you're going to hit an aggressive dink or a short dink and Y. Think about it. There are two places that you gotta hit. You can either hit A, try to get deep, 
and push your opponents back, like I told you that they don't want to do. And if players ready positions here and you don't see them like this or like this out in front, I would try to go for more deep dinks. However, also what you can do is go for short dinks. And what I mean by that is go for the middle of the court. Because regardless of how tall these players are, if you can hit a short fainting dink in here, what's going to happen? They're going to have to take the ball and step in. They're not going to be able to reach over the court. So I want you to think again, try to get a little bit less of the ball to aim it shorter in the court. That's going to force them to have to step in and hit the ball. And that gets to my next point as well, okay? Less is more, start anticipating, start realizing the different types and the reasons why you're getting the ball back. It's one thing to just dink the ball back, one thing to hope to get the ball back, it's another thing to play with an intention. Think about the balls that you hit. If you go short, you know your opponent's gonna step in. If you go deep, maybe they'll take it back. Maybe you're playing an opponent that doesn't know how to take the ball out of the air. Start realizing why you're learning different types of dinks and you're gonna be so much better while you hit. Now, I hope this video, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you improved your dinks. I hope you got a couple tips that will instantly improve your dinks. If any tips stuck with you, or if you guys have any other tips, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear which ones helped you or any new tips. Make sure to subscribe to Universal Rackets. Make sure to follow us on Instagram. If you want any type of pickleball programming in your area, make sure to subscribe and Universal Rackets representative will get out to you. Have a good one, happy hitting, and we will see you guys next time on court.